In this video, I'm going to expand on ways to pass around 9P files, namespaces, and other things around your grid, or even over the internet in general. I'll be starting off at a higher level and working down uh, till I get to the individual functions in the libraries. First off is a script called 9FS. So a common use for this is for mounting the 9FAT partitions. So I'm on a PyBase terminal here. So I'm going to run uh, PyDOS. So it'll automatically run what needs to be run and mount the FAT partition in slash n. So I can see the FAT partition on the SD card on this uh, Py here. Um, so 9fs is just a script. That'd be in uh, rc bin 9fs. And looking through the 9fs script, there are several things in it. Um, it can be fed, uh, you know, uh, specifics for remote systems, mount point and such, uh, but it will check for certain words and uh, run the, uh, the details found in them. So one of them is this ISO case here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and run that one. Well, let's actually go over first like what it says it wants to do. So it's going to run serve. It's going to contact uh, this particular address. Whoops, wrong one. Where is it at? Here it is. So it's going to run serve, contact this particular address over the internet. Um, that'll be the posting in the SRV directory. And this is where it will be mounted. I'll go ahead and just run that. And all I have to do is run 9fs iso. As it posted it, if I look in N, I see that it's there now. Oops, change directory in ISO. And here it is pulling down um, the files that would be in a uh, in a nine front ISO. So these are just all the standard nine front files since pulling it down off of a uh, off a external server. Now, if I want to stop using this, um, for one, I mentioned in a previous video that um, there's technically kind of two file descriptors open. One of them is going to be in serve. Uh, so we can see here that there is the ISO. And the other one is obviously that I have this now open in my namespace. So first off, I need to remove serve ISO. Whoops, need slashes, serve ISO. And then once I close this window, they'll remove any uh, connections to that. So what exactly is serve doing? Well, let's uh, go look at that. Uh, that'll be in sys source mand and scroll down here to let's see srv there it is so serve assumes that um, you're going to be dialing a 9p connection um, that's what's going to be dealing with so it will dial to connect to uh, an outside server. Oops. I'll look up dial. I want look up dial used as a function in place. There it is. So it's going to make, you know, a uh, an address out of uh, what you're trying to call, um, one suitable for the dial function call it and return a, uh, a file descriptor. Um, later on, it's going to get down to this part here. It's going to call this function post, which is um, not a library once internal to this command. And this will literally, so that's where it writes that little post thing to the screen. It's going to create a file um, 
named with whatever you wanted the um, the server post to be named. And then it's literally going to get the file descriptor that's returned, make a string out of it, and write it into that, uh, you know, this new file that you've created. So, and then after that, it will go about and, uh, you know, mount it. If I go back up here. Um, it'll go down and uh, try to mount that um, into the, uh, the namespace if you ask it to. Now you can, uh, now you can connect to a remote 9P server, but suppose you want something to connect to your server. Uh, for that, we use listen. So there's, um, there's actually two ways to use listen. First is just plain listen. Uh, that would be aux listen. Um, this first plain listen uh, is used by the startup scripts and is designed to start several listeners at once. Um, since that is more about system configuration, I'll cover that in a different video. The other option is this uh, listen one. So that's listen with the number one at the end. And this is for ad hoc stuff that can be used by any user with access to the network. So if we go back and wanna see what's going on inside listen one. So that's going to be in aux. And looking for Listen one. So listening is handled um, kind of differently than calling something. Calling something's a pretty straightforward thing of just running dial. Um, listening's a little bit more complicated. So um, first off, you have to run an announce. Um, and that sort of sets up the network connection that you'll want to be listening to something. Uh, after that will be a the individual listen, which will then open it up and expect um, actually handling the calls as they come in. Once they come in, you have the option to uh, reject it if you don't want to handle that call or accept it. So there's sort of four steps involved in listening for incoming uh, connections. Uh, after that, you know, if you do accept it, um, that will return a file descriptor, and from then on, you're just reading and writing uh, in and out of that file descriptor uh, to handle that uh, individual connection. So I can go ahead and just run listen one right off this terminal here. I'll open this up. I'm going to run aux listen one. I'll set T, which means to run it as this user, V for verbose, so we can see what it's doing. I'll be listening for TCP connections from any IP address on port, I'll do 9000. Um, if a, um, you know, if it accepts it, what I want to do is handle that connection using export FS and it will export from the root directory. I'll just have my uh, users directory here. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And the listener started, and so that's taking up the process in this window. So it didn't return back a prompt. So I'll connect to a uh, another computer here. Use my CPU server. And from here, I can run serve. I can connect to, um, let's be specific here, TCP at video pi on port 9000. I'll give it a, uh, just a, I'll call it bogus, bogus. That's what will be named in the serve posting and then tell it to mount to N. So we can see down here, it got an incoming call um, from the video pi. And, or from um, from Beefcake to the video pie, and it's handling it on that connection there. So over here, I can go over and look in N. 
And that's basically all the files that are in, um, you know, my user's home directory. So if I go back to that, yep, that's just the same files that are in user's home directory. It's just that this time now they're, uh, oops, I can actually go in list. And we can see they're in the end directory. So listen doesn't uh, just need to be used for 9P stuff. Let's go ahead and close all this stuff down. Um, you can have listen um, run any sort of program to handle whatever's coming in. So you can use it to write your own FTP or HTTP server. Um, so I've done this demo before, but it shows that you can have listen, listen to anything that's uh, coming in. So I'll connect back to Beefcake here. Oops. H. Beefcake. I'm gonna need to make sure that my audio device is in my namespace here. This will be the audio device on Beefcake. And I'm going to run aux, listen one, do TV again, we'll listen for any TCP connection from anywhere. So the asterisk means just accept any IP address. You can put in a specific IP address if you want to sort of filter it. We'll be at port 9090 and I'm going to run, and a lot of times you have to be very specific um, with listen on where exactly the, the thing is. Um, so I'm going to be looking in user, the dad, bin, rc, speaker. And this is a script that will uh, take any text, uh, feed it into a text-to-speech program and pipe that directly into the audio device. So I'll hit enter. And the listener is now started. So I can open up a window here on the terminal. I'll run serve TCP from beefcake port 9090. I'll make a post in serve called talk. And since this is not a file system I'm trying to bring in, I won't give it a mount point. So I'll run that. Oh, shoot. I mistyped it again. Let's do this again. Not bib bin. There we go. Run the listener again. So over here I'll have to remove that server post. Serve talk. And we'll just run this again. All right. Incoming call. It's set up the connection. I should have a post and serve now called talk. There it is. And if I type into it, hello, and just send that straight into serve talk since it's basically just a named pipe. Oops, I need to do, that's right, I need to append it. Hello. So now I have remote text to speech. I could just type that now. I have remote text to speech. Or talk. Now I have remote text to speech. So as you can see, you can just sort of put anything in a listener um, and just send anything you want to it. So. Um, it's very easy using this listen one to just sort of make, again, ad hoc or test, um, test various sort of server software you might be working on. Oh, and another option um, with these is to use TLS to make encrypted connections. So I already have uh, my LabPy CPU server set up to run a listener on port 9040. Um, and connections to that port will initiate a, a, a TLS session and then run export FS to share the uh, the SCD40 sensor files.
And so I can just uh, go here. And there is a, um, a TLS version of serve, which is just a, a, a script that runs a kind of TLS wrapper around it. So I'll serve TLS. And I want to call lab pi on port 9040. Uh, we'll make a SCD40 as the serve posting, and then go ahead and mount that into N. And then we can just go to N. And now we have the SCD40 directory here. And we get the files for the uh, that SCD40 sensor. So I can just sort of now read it from here. And the only difference is this time it's doing it under um, a TLS connection. So I'll have links uh, in the description to all the relevant man pages for this stuff. And uh, as always, have fun.